but choice is rarely a simple thing, especially when it comes to investing in new tech tools, the effectiveness of which has yet to be proven in the realities of your business. But those who can't make decisions usually lose, right? Hi everyone, my name is Gabriel and welcome to Look Academy, where we teach you skills that are somehow useful when working with digital signage completely free and without any final exams. You're watching the last third episode of our course entirely dedicated to digital signage hardware. Haven't seen the previous two? No problem. All episodes are completely independent and complement each other, revealing the topic of the course regardless of the order in which you watch them. Links to the other episodes are of course available in the description here. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell so you don't miss a single new cool video. And we only make cool videos. Well, as promised, today we're going to talk about how to choose the right digital signage hardware for your needs. Don't be surprised, but as always, everything starts with the right questions. And the first one of them is what for? At this stage, it is important to identify the key tasks for your digital signage and the target audience you want to reach with it. Let's say you want to replace the traditional menu at your fast food restaurant with a more cutting edge digital menu board. In this case, the task is not only to show prices for current items, but also to upsell using mouth-watering content. Vibrant, juicy videos and images with your best or promotional dishes will definitely help here. To transmit such content without loss of quality, the best choice would be OLED or QLED flat panel displays ranging in size from 43 to 55 inches with a brightness of at least 500 nits and 4K resolution support. Given these inputs, as well as the challenging environmental conditions associated with the typically close proximity of the kitchen, commercial grade displays from Philips, Samsung, LG or Sony are worth considering for such projects. The same solution could be suitable for advertising displays in a grocery store or fashion boutique. However, in a large hotel lobby or the central alley of a shopping mall, these displays can get lost. Here, in addition to the task of informing guests and visitors, the goal is also to surprise them and cause them a wow fact. Furthermore, the information must be easy to read from a long distance. In such conditions, the best solution would be video walls or large LED screens. At the same time, for navigation purposes in the same facilities, the usual form factor of a floor standing kiosk with a touch screen is much better suited. The next important question is, where will your sign be located? Obviously, a regular TV is not suitable for the facade of a building. This, of course, should be an LED screen in an outdoor version, weatherproof and vandal resistant. In addition, its brightness should start from at least 4000 nits to avoid the negative impact of direct sunlight on the picture. Increased brightness for the same reasons is the main requirement when placing the display in a showcase. However, taking into account the fact that people will look at your screen from close distance, I would recommend using flat panel displays with high brightness in such installations, which at a minimum will be cheaper than indoor LED screens. It is also important to understand how your display will be mounted. If, for example, it is a ceiling mount at a height of 3 to 5 meters, you should not use a screen with a size of less than 55 inches. And for placement in a wall niche or a structure specifically assembled for the project, Open frame displays created specifically for such cases are suitable. Touch monitors of 21 to 32 inches will be the right solution for floor stands or wall mounts when organizing interactive customer experiences in stores or bank branches. And in the case of meeting room displays placed on the wall mount at a height of about one and a half meters from the floor, compact 10 to 15 inch touch screens are best suited. Another question to answer is, how many hours per day will your digital sign be operational? If you're planning to build a network of corporate TV screens in your office space with a standard 40 hour work week, 
consumer-grade TVs and players may be the right budget solution for you. But this will not work for a 24-hour store or, for example, for a medical center or a gym that operates more than 10 hours a day, 7 days a week. Under these conditions, consumer-grade hardware will very quickly fail. In this regard, only professional solutions with acceptable operating hours of 16 per 7 or 24 per 7 are suitable for such locations. The next important question is, what are you going to broadcast and how? It must be clearly understood that in the case of digital signage, the key element is content. No matter what cutting edge and outrageously expensive screen you install, it will simply be a waste of money without quality content that should perform your tasks. This is why hardware should be selected according to the approved content strategy and not vice versa. So as I mentioned earlier, displaying vibrant videos will require displays with a brightness of 500 nits or more and 4K resolution support. At the same time, scenarios with a lot of streaming content will require more powerful display specs. In this case, it's probably best to use the powerful professional digital signage player we covered in episode 2. It's also worth considering, at this stage, how exactly the content will be delivered and played on your displays. You don't want to use a USB flash drive and a basic media player with its interface displayed on the screen, do you? I knew it. This is when you should decide on the right digital signage software. The important thing here is that it should be compatible with the hardware you plan to use. For example, LookDS supports most popular OS platforms, which significantly expands your choice of hardware. In addition, it offers an affordable line of in-house reliable hardware players. The next question is always crucial. How much money are you willing to spend? It's a mistake to think that digital signage is an expensive solution and therefore it is not for you. As in almost any other industry, there are options to suit every budget. For example, a basic consumer TV sign will cost you around 400 to 600 bucks on average. And this price includes software and installation. Does it look scary, right? Well, the last question you have to answer is who will install your digital sign? There are, of course, two options, you or professional AV integrators. The DIY option always looks attractive at the first glance, especially if you or someone on your team has the appropriate tech skills. But are you sure which mount will suit your wall or ceiling? Are you ready to independently install the power socket in the place where you need to mount the screen? If yes, then go ahead. Just make sure that the view of your screen is not blocked by third-party objects. And don't forget about two sockets behind the TV if you plan to use a hardware player. However, we would still recommend hiring professionals. Prices on the market vary and you can certainly choose an option that suits your budget. Well, that's probably all I have for today. We hope that this course will help you more easily and quickly navigate the nuances associated with selecting the right hardware for your digital signage projects. If you still have any questions, welcome to the comments. We will definitely answer everyone. And don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Gabriel was with you. Take care and see you in the next videos. Bye.